Hey guys and welcome back today we have a new video we are getting again into splines and what we're going to be looking into is the scatter on spline grayscale yes so if we come to our library once again and we click on spline and path tools go to the spline section you're going to find these notes around here so we are going to have the scatter on spline on spline grayscale we also have a scatter on spline uh, color the one you have you can see here Yes, pretty much it's the same as style sampler this, but just uh, for color and grayscale. So yeah, as I was just saying, this note it reminds me a lot of the function or how uh, uh, tile sampler works, pretty much mainly because of some of its parameters. But let's get a little bit into this. What is this note doing, and how do we do it? So first off, we have our preview of our spline. Yes. So bear in mind something I haven't mentioned before. When you connect, yes, a spline node to another, meaning you connect your coordinate, data, and amount, you are most probably going to lose your preview, yes, information. So you're going to have this. So you want to actually see it, you need to click on the preview, yes, output or input in our case, in order to preview what that node is showing, actually. Same happens here. We have two kinds of different splines. I'm going to plug them one on the other, and as you can see, I can't see it anymore. I just see this. But if I plug the preview into the preview of the other node, I'm going to get back that image. Yes? So, we're going to get back to Scatter on Spline Grayscale, and we're going to start to see what the hell is going on here. So, we have a lot of these uh, parabola shape scattered around all the segment of our spline. But let's see what is going on. So we are going to go first on the scatter mode. So we have shape spacing and, sc and scatter amount. The shape amount is going to be pretty much the how much we want it, to, like how much amount of the shapes we want it to be in this spline. Of course, the more we get into the harder it's going to be to fit depending on the size. I had already add some size variation. And shape spacing is going to... If I'm not incorrect about this, it's going to determine the amount of shapes you want in your spline, depending on the size of it and how much space it takes from it. So you can see I can choose an end and a start. So this is actually quite good for animations as well. So you can see, yes, we can change the pivot, yes, of where it starts and where it ends. So pretty much leave the zero that. And here we have our pattern random and distribution as always along spline we can do and uh, pattern index this is pretty much something we already seen in tile sampler before so here comes something really funny here we have the duplicates and if you start to play with it you're gonna find something ser really serious now this parameter should be in zero so i'm gonna do it from scratch if i turn this into two you're gonna see we have a duplicate and it's linear it's meaning it's exactly the same when it's moving on a line yes and i can offset this in order to get a better result now when we do a, a, a change in x it's not happening anything but if we do it in y it is and if we put it in maximum you're going to start to see what's going on here and how it works we can ch even change the rotation of this and the offset starts and end I'm going to play a little bit more with this. Yeah, like that. So, you can see how much we can play with feed, how how much detail we can add with just one node and using some specific shapes. So, yes, for when you're doing materials that uh, have something to do with tailoring uh, clothes and anything related to man-made uh, clothes, well, that's just... This is like the tool I would use if I had to be you. So in here, pretty much, we have exactly the same scale and common parameters of Adobe, following up by the position, which in this case, it changed difference. Because as we are talking about splines, we're talking about vectors and so on, we are talking as well as tangents. So we're going to see this uh, word, the tangent word, more and more with time being. We can change the normal value of it, that means we are moving. So our spline has a line. Each of these lines has a point where we are setting our shape, if I'm not mistaken, and each of them have a normal. So we are moving, yes, we are doing an offset, a local offset of each 
part of the tangent based in the normal direction of it. Yes. So and look at this. This is just amazing. Sorry, but I'm really amazed with this. So we have a local offset random. So it's gonna be doing completely random, and this is crazy. You can actually kind of simulate. Let's say this is a, a pearl necklace. Yes, and you want to simulate how the pearl necklace just broke into the floor and just left everything there. What well, you can actually do it with this. And you can simulate. You can simulate so many things. You can scatter objects on the ground. It can be crazy about it. So let's see what else we can do with this. And just I'm just getting crazy with this. <laughs> so let's change the shape now into a square. Where is it? Here. It's going to be too big, so we're going to scale it a little bit down. And we are going to do a small change in this. The reason we do that is because we're getting to a part with, where we need to uh, temper with rotation. So we're going to have uh, rotation random, as always. This is the pivot, meaning the shape is going to rotate over itself. And we have the rotation center on the pivot of the... Um, of the spline if I'm not mistaken and we can really make this change and go into any direction now there's a lot of rotations uh, parameters here and as you can see they haven't moved out of the line but there has to be something different I'm gonna be looking into this into more detail later because there has to be a reason why we have so many rotation parameters outside and we're gonna be catching up to them so here we have the color parameters that are pretty much the wine the ones we already know. So we can change the random laminance of our shapes. Uh, the spline height multiplier, we are not using that because we haven't plugging any of these. Uh, I could actually try that now. Let's do it live. Let's see how it goes. So I'm gonna put my hard map here. I'm gonna go to the bottom and use high input multiplier. And yeah, it's gonna work. So basically, it just works uh, as we have already uh, talked about on Tile Sampler. So yeah, pretty much these uh, parts just are the same. So this is something quite good, but there's just a small detail that I wanted to mention. Yes, and you're going to see it in the next video because we are running out of time, just realized. But after you have done this with a sculptor, on spline grayscale you really have an input to take into your material and that's just amazing but i would just wait for the other nodes because not all of the nodes allowed us to get our result instantly into our material i hope you like it and let's see you tomorrow in a new chapter